Jazz. I uh, am doing intros in case you didn't gather that from my abrupt uh, start of this episode. It's right. Chris fixed it in post production when the audio fades in and uh, the spotlight comes on and whatnot. Uh, Dude, hey, what you, what you don't know, uh, what you don't know because um, you don't listen to the show, is that one that one episode where um, we decided that we were going to do a cold intro, a uh, cold open. Uh, we actually did a cold open. Um. And you said Chris wouldn't. Our do topic that. today is cold open because Gary doesn't know what that means. <laughs> what's, what's a cold open? It's uh, is that just like no music, just like boom, we yeah, start. Yeah. Oh. And is then, that, is and that then, what you're doing today that, then too? That, well, I don't know. Maybe we'll see. Have you done that other times? I only did it once. The time that we that 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 you said that I wouldn't do that and we'd fix it in post. So I didn't fix it in post, and I put that I put that front and center. Yeah. Effectively, what you're saying is. If uh, Gary dares me to do it, I'm going to do it, is what I'm saying. This whole episode will be uh, <laughs> uploaded backwards. No, no. I can do that. That's <laughs> anyway, so hi, I'm Allison. That's <laughs> Gary. And this is Chris. <laughs> Why are we here? And we are collectively binary jazz on the internet. That is the first intro Allison has done in what? three years. <laughs> The best part is, it's the first intro Allison has done, and it was so much more concise and to the point than any intro I've ever tried. Uh, so useful, so valuable. Yeah. I'm over here rambling about like the internet and where you can find us, Allison's like, who we are, why we're here. Boom. Go. This is why they pay me the big bucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you two aren't being paid to be here. <laughs> I, what? What I was at a word camp where something like that happened. Someone asked like what my revenue model was for some thing I was working on, and it. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I'm doing because it it's fun. It wasn't this, but, but uh, in case you were wondering, like my idea of our revenue model is like we don't need one. If you're okay with that. It's never crossed my mind. <laughs> okay. Good. We are not here for the money. Turns out. I mean. <laughs> I, I but I mean, if we were, if people wanted to, then I'd be here for it. I just... Yeah, I mean, I think as as we've discussed uh, previously, if we did get money, I think uh -oh. that we would Don't, look oh, into oh. Uh, transcription services or something. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So, uh, big day yesterday. The first time in a month I'm a couch owner. Congratulations. First time in a month. Yeah. We got rid of the old couch a couple weeks before we moved. We've been here about two-ish weeks and the uh, couch showed up now uh, we bought a new couch we didn't the old couch we got rid of like we got rid of it because it was not comfortable and it weighed 6300 pounds so what is not going to be something i doubt that it do. actually weighed 6300 pounds um what did you do with the old 40. what did you do with the old 6000 pound uh couch it was a sleeper sofa and we dropped it off uh there was a charity in jacksonville called um Angel Aid, and they do a lot with um, foster kids and children of parents who are dealing with um, major medical issues. Generally, cancer, but not always. I mean, something where the parents going to be hospitalized for a while, and a family is, you know, generally in crisis for some reason. And uh, Angel Aid has both a store front where they sell stuff, uh, and then they also just say, "Hey, this is like family needs this." furniture or whatever so we're just giving it to him so so you don't i don't it, basically That's absolutely the answer. yeah that was the answer but I, I wanted to call it angel aid because i think that they're um they're just a homegrown cool charity in jacksonville that are really connecting with people and not corporate and big uh, so the um i won't get on a soapbox the 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 dude that started it uh is just like just works his butt off and i have a great deal of respect for him and started it because his family went through a similar situation. So neat, neat thing. Hidden gem in Jacksonville. <sighs> Jacksonville. In the my current... heart of hearts, when we get rid of our couch and get a new couch, I think we'll just put it outside. 
Does that work? I mean, do people the people pick those up because we there's a couch that's been like outside, I don't know, for like three months and it's it's not getting any love. Yeah, it's here's the way you get rid of furniture. Sometimes furniture will go, but like my opinion is is that it, most people aren't. It's one thing. It's another thing. It's like a sleeper. It's old. Also, it's like very plush. You know, like we inherited it from a grandma. Like I don't know if people are gonna trust it. Like. And I would get it. Like, I wouldn't be like, oh, cool. <laughs> a really plushy couch. <laughs> Let me this, bring that into my home. <laughs> in our marriage, this is the first couch we've ever purchased together. We've gone that route, like, all inherited couches. Uh, and I think we've had four. And the reason we've had four is because someone's like, oh, we're getting rid of a couch. It's kind of an upgrade to the old stinky one you have from grandma. Do you want it? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes we do. Yeah. We uh, we have only uh, couches as a couple and have only just in the last year inherited a couch. So we have sort of the opposite. <laughs> Here's, Although hey. one of the couches that we had at one point, it was actually a love seat. Okay. That it came from when we were living in an apartment together. Um, we had gotten like a second hand store. Um, and then a lot of our furniture has come from secondhand stores so it's not like we're getting like new stuff although we have like our, our couches are new were new are you we got them. are you both people that like when you're getting a couch you have to go sit on it and actually experience it, or can you just see it and be like i know i'll like that couch. no we need to we need to sit on it yeah because like oh, this one showed up in two boxes and we had never sat on it and actually didn't know how big it was until we set it up yesterday oh. because they, there's <laughs> we have there, a tight amount of space so we could never order something without knowing how big it is we, I mean, we vaguely knew, but not, like, I didn't measure or anything. I'm like, yeah, it'll fit there. Oh, we would definitely need to measure, because if it goes beyond, we would then not be able to get out the door. <laughs> there's an Ikea yeah. couch. Um, there's an Ikea couch, or a series, a type of couches. Couch boxes. Uh, that we've seen, like, online and in their catalog and stuff. Um, and we're like, oh, that, that looks like it's something that would be, that would be really cool. Uh, and then we've gone to the Ikea and it's been the least comfortable thing we have ever sat on in our entire lives. Like the worst possible thing. Like you wouldn't, you like sitting on it would be considered a form of torture uh, in the Geneva convention. It, it's just, so I it's, think that our theory, horrible. so sitting on a couch, couch is very important. I think our, our theory on this new couch was there's no way it can be worse than the previous couch we had, which we sat on for like six years because we were like, ah, I don't want to buy a new couch. You're like anything the will be a The previous couch we had like, had like a forward slope to it. So <laughs> after about 30 minutes, like your butt started to get sore because you were, you know, like your butt cheeks were trying to hold you on or I'm not really sure what the anatomy was going on, but there was like so something maybe, happening. Maybe so. it was good for you. It was like a weird workout. <laughs> yeah, now I'm going to, now my, now my glorious glutes are going to Your glutes sag are going to disintegrate. <laughs> <laughs> um, Here's my way to get rid of furniture, uh, and actually, like, pretty much everything. So we had, like, a dresser that was really beat up, an inherited one that no one wanted, you know, whatever, fine. Uh, Craigslist Curb Alert, mm -hmm. and just describe it as accurately as possible. Here's a dresser. It needs to be painted. This door hinge is rusty and squeaks a lot, and it won't close all the way unless you push really hard. Free. And it's, like, everything I've curb alerted has been gone within half a day. Um, Cleaning up around this place, I, uh, here's a fun thing. Cleaning up around this place, I uncovered a basketball hoop in the backyard. Like, there's vines everywhere growing on stuff. So I pulled some vines down. I'm like, that's a, that's not a tree. That's a basketball hoop. So it, one of those on wheels. So cleared it up and dragged it up to the end of the driveway. Curb alerted it on Craigslist at like, I don't know, six o'clock in the evening. And by 7.30, it was gone. Nice. And then I had to like reply to a bunch of email like, sorry, it's gone. And delete the listing. Curb alert is the way to go for everything. Chris, you should just put a curb alert on that couch that's been sitting out for three months. Stop it, take a photo, curb alert it, put the address up, and then <laughs> take it's, the responsibility then, for the thing that's not yours. Yeah. <laughs> well, then you've cleaned up an eyesore in your community. It's true. <laughs> and then there'll be or, an eyesore. Someone else's it's community. also it's also been it's also been out when it was raining too. So I don't know that anybody would want that at this point. I I am. I say add alert. a little table, some snacks, maybe a lamp. Aaron has always had this, had, I mean, obviously this is not a project that's going to happen this year, but um, we have, well, it used to be, um, we used to have junk, uh, junk pickups once a year in the summer. Um, mm -hmm. There'd be, everybody would, would take their, like, it would be like a rolling thing around the city and like it just for large things you want to get rid of. 
Um, they stopped doing it, or rather they're doing it by appointment since last year because uh, I don't know why. Uh, it's cheaper, I guess. Um, but so for, for a couple, like for about two months, you could drive through different parts of Salt Lake City um, and see like just piles of stuff. If you found the right neighborhood, then you could just go up and down and you could find some stuff. And there's always couches. So because couches out in nature seem so weird, Erin wanted to do a, like a photo series of herself sitting on various couches outside somewhere. Yeah. Like, the whole thing. Um, that never happened, sadly. But but yeah. Uh, and obviously that's not going to happen uh, while her uh, knee is uh, impaired. But um, I think that's sort of a, a secret desire. Other things on the, sec uh, the desire list uh, is driving around... Uh, uh, the United States and finding all the dilapidated homes uh, and going inside and exploring. Yeah. I, I would venture that you... Maybe you could combine those two things even too. Possibly. I mean, in this area that I'm in, I, I mean, within 10 miles of here, I can probably think of like a dozen that I've driven past that, you know, like the edge of, I don't know, like the edge of suburbia transitioning to rural, like there's been some like growth and death and growth and death. And as a result, there's some properties where it's like, oh. You know, yeah, the ones that are, the ones that look really one. scary, the ones that are like, they're like yeah. falling down and they're like, it used to be something, you know what it was, but you, it doesn't have enough of a shape to know what it used to be. Um, those are the ones that are really exciting. We did actually, um, there was a house out by, uh, it might have been where we found the. Um, might have been when we went to see the the red man uh, uh, pictograph. Um, there's a house uh, just out in the middle of nowhere, nearby, um, not close to much of anything. It was kind of close to like a like a I don't know some sort of ref refinement facility, not refinement, but like mining type thing. Um, anyway, the house was like missing a back wall. Um, like the wall had just like collapsed and so you could like go into it and you could see the whole structure and the form of the house but there was no back wall and you could and most of the walls had actually been fallen down and you could go into where the bathroom used to be and there was like this is where the toilet was and now there's just porcelain shatters all over uh and and it was it was it was very interesting the kids were kind of freaked out uh <laughs> my son was like it's gonna fall down it's gonna fall that down means on. you're parenting correctly yeah. you always want to like be on that teeter line of like yeah. educational or just a little weird <laughs> yeah um, yeah my son my son swore it was gonna it was gonna fall down on us if we went inside it did not uh, it was kind of leaning a little bit so <laughs> you're like for the record <laughs> all my family members emerged trap <laughs> yeah we came out with 75 percent of the people we went in with it's, it's fine. fine it's fine i also under the kudzu i there's a there's like a kudzu. Hole. The word of the day is kudzu. Is it? No. Are you are you familiar with that stuff? I am. Okay. It's a weed, a viney weed that uh, I mean can grow like up to a foot a day in some cases, like yeah, right, it's, right, right. It's and it stuff. it just attaches onto stuff and, and eats it. So the backyard parts of the backyard are just entirely covered in kudzu. Um, so I need to I need to fix that. But um, there's a pole so that has like a light, like two crazy light fixtures on it obviously part of the theme of this house and mm -hmm. uh and i discovered another light pole that's that has no lights on it but the pole is there and i thought another one that i thought was a tree that i'm going to need to put on this weekend and figure out if i can attach similar lights to that it'd be nice to have uh and i would assume then that like the way they're positioned i would assume there's going to be a third somewhere up hmm. the other side hmm. but now i need to start looking more closely at the tree trunks and is that actually a tree or <laughs> is that a light pole it's a fun uh, game <laughs> tree or light pole yeah tree or light <laughs> yeah you have a topic today or are we do. just gonna talk about gary's new house gary's i mean i'm happy to uh, do the that. topic today is erinaceous erinaceous this is like the topic last week where it sounds like a person's name <laughs> yeah please spell it for me yeah it's e-r-i-n-a-c E O U S. Okay. Uh, since my my partner's name is Aaron and is spelled E R I N, I cannot I cannot look at this word and not think it has something to do with Aaron. It's 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 uh that's that's very that's a very Aaronaceous uh thing to say. It's of or relating to a person named Aaron. That's what this means. 
It's impossible. It's impossible to come up with no. that. Was, I knew that when I was bringing it to the table. I was just like, you know what? I, I couldn't avoid it. It yeah. just kept, well, it didn't keep popping up. It kept popping up in a book I was reading. As I sip my gentacular glass of sweet tea. <laughs> the atomic, the atomic blend of. It's, it's crazy. I mean, even when you like it, you dilute it so that you can see through it, it's still so strong in tea and sugar flavor that it's every sip I'm like, oh. I know what the lamp behind you reminds me of. It reminds me of Catholic school. It reminds me of like the oh, no. light fixtures they have. Sorry, I've been sitting here. It's that against the white brick. <laughs> It's like this weird thing where they need more lighting, but they can't use actual fire. And so there's like a cord and like, I don't know what it is about that. <laughs> Why does Wait, it they can't signify? use actual fire? Is that what you said? Yeah. Well, nobody's using actual fire for lighting in churches anymore. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Not at my Catholic school anyway. I don't know. Maybe just me. Sorry. <laughs> I just no, had I a, like a light bulb I, moment. I, I see it. I see it. I saw it after you after you said that. Like if you lowered your camera slightly and you were all of a sudden wearing like a priest collar, I would be like, "No." Oh, no offense to priests, to all our priest listeners. <laughs> yeah, our our large contingent, of... our large contingent of religious followers. <laughs> yes, I would not be surprised if there were a couple priest listen. Well, I would be surprised if there were a couple of any demographic uh -huh. that would be the, a yeah. large our largest demographic but i would not be surprised if a priest was i think our largest demographic is monks <laughs> is are monks that? not a subset of priest i guess i don't know uh, um, I or mean, a subset wouldn't they just be kind of like peers oh no in my effort to make everything a taxonomy <laughs> monks right. are clearly a subset <laughs> of priests i i just know is there this, are some, is this related some to the is this related to the baby gender chart Arenaceous? No, the monks. The conversation about taxonomy? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I don't think so. No, I mean, just my desire to put every. I love that video. If you've not seen this video, we'll link it in the show notes. Yeah, no, I think I somehow that works. I say it, and then it's linked. It's it's voice recognition technology. Um, in any case, there's a great video. Um, uh, I think it's I think it's a uh, non-binary YouTube. Yeah, that's what I remember. YouTuber. Um, uh, someone said, I will give you cake if you give a three minute talk on something. And so the three minute talk was on um, genders based on uh, gender announcement cakes. And it is absolutely fantastic. Um, and there is a beautiful um, taxonomy chart uh, mapping out um, uh, and parallel in things like shoes and uh, sports and um, I don't remember what else, but it's it's uh, guns, Gun, guns, guns, for the taxonomy. Yes, and so approximately, I would guess approximately twenty genders are explored in the video. Uh, it's it's a it's a great, but a beautiful. It's definitely a good taxonomy. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. I mean, I define, yes, which leads me to wonder, like, I think that that means that my understanding of the world is that ultimately somewhere there is a root thing that describes everything that all other things come from that fall into this taxonomy, like can be subdivided into. Erinaceous. Ta-da! Erin is, Erin is the root of all things. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to argue with that. Yeah. I hear like barking and yelling inside. I'm waiting for someone to bust out the door. Well, I was laughing because you had a bit of kerfuffle and then it got strangely quiet on your end as far as third party noise. And I was like, that's either a positive or a negative. I'm not sure. Uh, the thing is, I've with Ty and Katie, they're so great with Charlotte that yeah. I'm sort of like, if, if there, nobody's going to get hurt, I shouldn't say that. Why did I invite that? <laughs> what the hell is wrong with me? Right, you're, inviting, you're that. inviting danger in real time. Yeah, great. <laughs> it's okay. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Oh, there's the door. And now, and now, I'm wondering. I'm looking at this word, and I'm thinking of a similar word, pugnacious. 
and wondering if that has to, <laughs> that that is of or relating to pugs, obviously. <laughs> It's a pugnacious never... face that he's making. Yeah. <laughs> what a pugnacious face. Or tenacious. <laughs> the only thing that comes after tenacious is, is D. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> We're all very captivated by what's going on in the third screen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Something something bad happened. And, and consoling. And, yes. Um... <laughs> yeah, in fact, in fact, he did invite danger, and we saw it in real time, and there it was. Yeah, let that be a lesson. Don't say the thing, and just, then the thing just will happen. Shut up! Like keep it in your head, right? Like weird arms, right, and dog noses, and like. Yeah. Oh, his breath is terrible. What have you been eating? Some trash. You're in charge of that. Not. Yeah. You want to come sit with me up here? All right, let me get your leash. <sighs> What would happen if you gave your kids their own podcast? What would they talk about? Uh, I would talk about cars. Cars? Cars, yeah. Uh, Katie would talk about um, Katie would really just talk about the world around her. Mm-hmm. She's very into understanding. Can you hear me okay? Uh, not great, but we can hear you. Okay, I'll be right back. The dog decided to use a, use a treat. So I I adventure. There is a thing I was going to say. Oh, um, yeah. I, as you were talking about things that that the kids would have podcasts about, um, I was talking about this podcast yesterday, um, and how for me this podcast is sort of a, uh, an excuse to actually get use out of my like fancy uh, audio equipment um, because it wasn't getting enough use before. Um, and then I described like what the actual uh, context of the show is. And do you ever have that uh, experience when you're trying to explain what the show is, where people are like, people are like, oh, what's your podcast about? And then you tell them, and they're like, oh. <laughs> like, I, I'm kind of sorry that I asked, and I'm going to say that I'm going to listen, but I'm never going to listen. And that happened to me last week with a friend. She was like, I had no idea you had a podcast. What's it about? And I explained, and I was like all excited. And then I was like, She was like, Cool, yeah. I was like, This is going I, um, Exactly, yeah. Uh-huh. I thought I was getting us another listener. <laughs> I've told people about it, and they're like, Oh, yeah, that seems like something you'd do. I have also, I have also oh. added to people though that I'm like it helps to listen if you know at least one of us in real life. Like I was like I think if you're coming in completely blind and maybe not having ever interacted with any of us, it might seem a little just like you're not used to it. But if you go in and knowing at least one voice, I think you'll be fine. I mean, isn't any podcast like that? Like I feel like no, no. no. There are some that are there are people that are uh, captivating that I don't know in real life. <laughs> and that is not us. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that, even though it sounded that way. And maybe I do kind of believe it. Um, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, I think that we're captivating, but I think you're right. I think basing on that, like having a relationship with us in some way makes it easier. Um, but just as podcast that, like, to, bro, uh, where you're like, oh, I'm going to listen to it because Chris is on it. I'm going to listen to it. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. 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 Because like, uh, uh, there's one... Not one of those that's like, oh, I can't miss this week's episode. Yeah. There, there's there's a podcast that I kind of sort of started listening to um, only, but it, it's, it's I don't know that I, I, I mean, I guess it, it is a podcast and I have listened slash watched it, um, but like I'm, I did so and do so because it is like a, a from the critical role people, mm-hmm. um, like two of them, like, so I like, and they had, they had a podcast before they were doing that stuff. And so this is sort of an extension of, of that. Um, and they're often like have guests and their guests are from the critical role family. Um, so like it's, it's related to another thing. And so I guess I have like a connection, even though I don't have a connection to them, but like, um, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like that would still apply. Like, you know, you kind of need to know who these people are to begin with, to have any interest in them bullshitting for you know, an hour with some other person that you don't really know either. Mm-hmm. Um, because there's no point 
you know, they don't have a topic. We have, we have more of a topic than they do. Um, <laughs> um, you know, there's, yeah, it's mostly just like chatting and hanging out and talking, currently talking about, I mean, the reason why they're doing it this way, um, which is normal, like what we do basically, uh, and without sort of a topic is because they can't meet in person. What they were doing for a while, I guess last year, was the podcast had evolved uh, and they were like doing, um, I don't know, going out in the world and doing a thing. Um, so like there was like, I don't know, like a sword casting episode and like a, like a magic episode or something. Oh. Um, what I'm hearing is you think we need to take this show on the road. <laughs> I mean, I, Binary Jazz Live sounds pretty cool, but <laughs> I, wouldn't, really I wouldn't argue against that. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I, don't, would. I, I at guess least during I, a pandemic. I guess I just assume that all podcasts fit into that category where, like, you could jump in blind and just start going with it and eventually learn the people and whatever, or you could sort of have some sort of a connection to one or other, all of them, um, from some other thing and be like, oh, yeah, that person does a thing and I know that person, so I'm going to listen to their podcast because of, of that loose connection. It's a really long rambling thing. We're getting really meta. Yeah, it's very irenaceous. Yeah, no, that's not irenaceous at all. What are we talking about? That's not irenaceous. <laughs> Aaron, well, Aaron would not frank. ramble uh, to that degree. So no, this is not. That's not an irenaceous. <laughs> I used to say that actually when I was uh, doing um, helping organize work camp in Jacksonville. Let me be frank, because there was an organizer named Frank who's like the opposite of me. Um, frank was like very much the numbers guy and had data on it. Such a Gary it. joke. <laughs> but let me be frank. It is. Um, yeah, it totally is. Um, but I am afraid to make a guess at Aaronatius, Chris, honestly, because I don't want to um, insinuate anything about your partner. <laughs> so I'm very like... Anticipate. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of like treading on thin ice here. Like I don't want to be like, oh, Aaronatius means and then say something horrible and you'd be like... <laughs> That's not right. right. This is not like that at all. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll be like, I, I didn't mean anything, but I, you know, once that horse is out of the barn, so to speak. Right? <laughs> wow, this move has really changed you. You're a real farmer now. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. true. Yes, me out here bending my fences or whatever. What is that from? Bending your fences. Bending, your fences? bending my fences. Mending your fences. Bending my fences. I don't know. It's probably biblical. No, it's from a video I saw somewhere on the internet. Ah, it's from the internet. That, that makes narrows sense. it down. <laughs> explains so much. Even though we are people of the internet, you'll have to narrow it down further. Um, I don't know that I can, because I have to research it and remember where the heck I saw it. It was just like one clip. I want to say that Will Farrell said it. But I don't know why I would be watching Will Ferrell on the air. Well, I know it from a song. It's an old phrase, right? Mending fences? Yeah. Oh, I think I'm thinking Desperado. That's not right. You're out riding fences. That's different. <laughs> oh. Um. Nope. Sorry. I don't mend any fences. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Now I feel I, bad although, about the actual definition of Aranaceous because I wasn't thinking like. <laughs> oh no! Oh, this will be I fun. Think it's a really cute definition. So. Yes, <laughs> we're gonna that. end with conflict. Oh, yeah. this will be so good. Um, <laughs> I say I don't mend fences when, in fact, I realized that over the break I did mend our fence. So I found my fence on Sunday. That's great. It's good yeah. to know where your fence is. It's always, it's, yeah, it's always good. Do you to know, know where your fence, fence is? It's eight o'clock. Do you know where your fence is? <laughs> I'm a. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try and figure out how I can record this from the bottom of the hill, of my property next week. You're gonna be like, it, it's. It is dense foliage. I might not make it back out alive. That's not true. I'll be fine. But I'll have a lot more mosquito bites. And if we all take a field trip, trip and record from someplace really silly, that that'll just make for really. Um, staticky podcast <laughs> it's true yeah <laughs> not not the best audio quality no <laughs> yeah fair i feel like the fair. weirdest place i could go is just out on my patio maybe but then you'd hear my neighbor yelling and he's 
just a lot. Is is do you have uh oh god, there is a there is a, a a tape back in the days when people made tapes. Um and I found this on the internet, I think, but there was it was originally from a tape and it was like two guys yelling at each other and it was it was like the the person who recorded it recorded his 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 two elderly like male elderly neighbors up, upstairs neighbors who like were constantly shouting at each other and like insulting each other and so the tape was like literally like 60 minutes of just fights between the two of them and sometimes like physical altercations and that that was it that's all it was i can't remember what it's called now and i almost wish that i could because then i could link to it Maybe I'll maybe I'll see if Almost. I still have it lying around. Um, I might I might have gotten rid of it, but it was uh, it it was a it was a journey. Yeah, there's there's definitely a, a thing. So uh, listening to your neighbors uh, being loud and obnoxious is is not just an Allison pastime. No. <laughs> On Independence Day, which was like our second or third night in this house, my next door neighbors like at nine o'clock, I start to hear some music, and I'm like, oh no, oh boy, here we go. And then, like, by 10.30, they were done and quiet. Like, they had, like, a little party, and they were so respectful. And uh, That I seems like them. quite a normal, I, nice little block of time. It's so, it, it so was. I've met, I don't know, several people. But but I, I've, like, waved at them and gone over, and then they're, like, waving as they walk in and close the door. Oh, okay. All right. So I don't think that they're interested in knowing any more than that I exist. That's enough. Well, also, you know, COVID, they're not like... I, I mean, I keep a mask in my pocket before I talk to anyone outside, like, and generally I've been, like, standing across the road from people, and, you know, Helena across the street, right over there, where I'm pointing, or looking, yes, has, has a million cats, minus two, roughly. So, uh, I think it's time to find out, uh, what Aaron mm. actually means, and I promise I won't take it personally. <laughs> I will. <laughs> On your behalf. <laughs> yeah, someone's got to. It means... But I can just I... turn around and go to confession. So, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it means like or relating to a hedgehog. <laughs> it's so fantastic. Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> the funny thing about that is that it's it's... <laughs> It's actually it's true. Off, it's not my far off of my definition. It's just the chunk. subject is different. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, um, in in the book that I was reading, <laughs> one of the ways it was used was like um, describing how a person to avoid conflict just went up and like curled up into a ball. Oh. I was assuming it had something to do with like hair. Oh, like, like bristly. Yeah. Are you are you really gonna go do dog things this time? Pete? Did Ray and Pete? Is that a thing? Boy, I hope that this is our most. Yes, that is the thing. Yes, yes, it's right. I found it. <laughs> what? The neighbors? Ray and Pete, and the and the <laughs> tape and the tape was called "Shut Up, Little Man." Oh, no. <laughs> Yes. Amazing. You drive me crazy. Yeah. Uh, well, we can always adapt Aranaceous to mean of like or relating to. I mean, to I, think, I think there's an alternate to different definition. Or it's either of or relating to a hedgehog <laughs> or of or relating to a person named Aaron. A person named Aaron. Yeah. Who does not have hedgehog qualities. <laughs> May or may not. I mean, so. yeah, I know. No more than anybody else. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, the dog was like uh, insistent on coming your outside. Right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't help that I, I drank that tea because I absolutely cannot focus. <laughs> what if for is the it, whole is day? It a sugar or a caffeine high or is it yep. both? Yep. Both. Ooh. Yeah, the sugar hits quick and hard, and then the caffeine. I mean, I literally have had like one, not even a full glass. I mean, probably like, I don't know, four to six ounces of tea, and then the rest was water. And I'm like, 
I'm ready to go for like a, Give me a glass 40 of minute water. run. And as we've uh, <laughs> discussed previously, you hate running. I, uh, or maybe I'm thinking of some other podcast and some other Gary, <laughs> some other alternate universe. No, I, I do hate running, and I'm actually thinking about starting it again because the hills <laughs> around here, uh, there's so much this area that I want to see, and uh, like a half hour walk doesn't get enough of it in. Do you have a so bicycle? Figured, that's probably a lot more sensible than running. Um, no, I don't. But you can get one. I could get a, I could get a Walmart bike for. I wonder. So so I would a advocate bike that barely so works. We have a bike collective, uh, a couple of them actually. Um, and the bike collective uh, basically takes in your old, broken, or just last year's bike that you don't want, and they'll fix it up and and take the parts and rebuild it and whatever and put it back together, and then we'll, they'll resell them for much cheaper. And they also do like uh, classes for like how to repair your bikes and whatever, and they give guys oh, fun to people that, that need them or whatever. Um, so that's where we got the kids a new um, like multi-speed bikes that are actually like adult size or almost um and they're like it was like i don't know i think total like 300 bucks for two like several hundred dollar bikes um otherwise That's i mean like really reasonable. good really good really good mountain bikes used obviously re rebuilt basically but like they're um they're really good and the kids love them and and so and, and like we would have done like go to whatever like big box store and, right. and find cheap cheapest bike we could find otherwise because that's what you do if you're not like super crazy mountain biker um but this was super uh the right thing to do and i would go there again uh if i wanted to bike um because they literally like you could um and and aaron's sister used to work at a bike shop she worked at a, worked at a couple different bike shops too so she actually knows um like that's a really good brand that's a really good brand some of these bikes are like a thousand two thousand dollars like and yeah you can get them for a couple hundred bucks um sure like that that's that that's a lot more that's sensible. a great deal yeah i searched for um cycling shops near me it just doesn't seem popular in, in concord yeah I, probably I feel in like, charlotte I feel like bigger in, city in salt lake and in utah probably we have a bit of a uh more demand on on such yeah. things than other places because of the outdoor enthusiast uh population yeah it seems like the outdoor thing here is people just are in it like that's what they do they go outside like they're like it's not a hobby this is my life <laughs> here I am. yeah like i don't need to like i don't need to do anything i can just be outside like that's enough uh and honestly like i was not ready for hills <laughs> Can't I'll do a number on your hurt. knees if you're not used to it for running. Yeah, well, the knees have been hurting a bit, and then I realized like there was one day where I did something like 48 sets of stairs, mm, moving stuff nice. up and down. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, well, maybe that's why. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've definitely kept it under about 20 since then. Yeah, because Florida think doesn't have any like, of those things. No, I would take a walk with the kids in Florida, and the elevation change would be like 17 feet from our front door, like on the entire like and a half hour walk. I did the same half hour walk with Tyler. Like the first walk we did, I looked at my watch and it was 150 feet elevation change in half an hour. Uh, and there's a big hill around the corner that I like to finish with on the walk because like, it's just stupid. It's like, you look at it, you're like, oh, why didn't I start with this? And that's exactly why I like it because you have to go up this stupid big hill to get home. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know what benefit I get other than sweat and heart rate, but I haven't really looked at the houses around on that hill because I've been focused on getting up it. It's one of those where like if there's like debris like on the gravel or on the Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter. We will read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.